So, guest of the month, uh, uh, our webinar that, that we do regularly. Um, so we're joined here, here by Jamie. But um, before we get started, what I'd like to do is just go through a very short and sweet uh, agenda today. So we'll kick off uh, with some introductions um, from myself uh, and Jamie. And then we'll get into the, the nitty gritty um, and the interview uh, with Jamie from 4.0 here. And then finally, we will go into Q&A. So what you'll see is there's a Q&A button on the webinar. So pop any questions within there. And at the end, um, we will do our best um, to get through most of them. So in terms of introductions, uh, my name is Gerpreet. I'm one of the senior account managers uh, here at Spotlight. Uh, so my role here is to manage and work with accounting practices across the UK and South Africa um, and speaking about all that advisory goodness and joined here today with Jamie. Jamie, I won't steal your thunder, I'll let you uh, introduce yourself. Sure, cool, thanks. Um, so yeah, I'm Jamie, I'm the owner of 4.0 um, and what we do and what, or what our reason to be is, is we are uh, an implementation, a systems implementation um, company. So typically we help businesses implement new finance systems. Um, typically that's you know, our type of clients are anything from SME up to um, larger mid-market. Um, we don't do big ERPs for, for huge corporates. Um, and yeah, we're, we're based in central London, Soho. Um, that's, that's our stomping ground um, and where, where, where you'll normally find me with, with a client today in, in central London. So that's, that's what today looks like, which, which is really cool. Um, nice, nice company in, in, in the media sector. Um, and yeah, um, that's typically as, as a business, I'll find myself at clients or talking to new clients about um, problems that they have within their finance function, how they can typically try to improve processes and adopt and implement change. And then we'll sort of take them through that process of how to implement um, either modules that complement what they've got at the moment or, you know, potentially a whole new finance system that, that, that looks to achieve um, what, what their, their own individual goals are as a business. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Jamie. So you're multi, multitasking today uh, with, uh, yeah, <laughs> with this webinar and being at a client. So, yeah, good on you. Um, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for joining uh, today. Really appreciate it. And great to have you as a, as a guest uh, guest of the month. Um, I know you've uh, touched a little bit on it uh, already, but to really kick things off, um, could you, you know, tell us a bit more about as CEO of 4.0, you know, what your regular day will look like for you and um, what your core mission is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, as, as a company, we're, we're sort of flexible working. So we're we're still um, going through that process of convincing staff that it's good to be back in the office <laughs> a little bit, to be <laughs> honest, um, kicking and screaming, but, um, you know, travel costs and things like this around London. But we go into the office two days a week and that's that's our time to be together and look at the projects that we're working on. We're, we're a project based business. Right. So um, typically we're brought in by a customer because they have a problem to solve whatever that might be. Um, so, you know, if they've got a reporting problem or they want to put something in around procurement or core finances or their current finance system is creaking um, and they need to get something bigger, um, those are the typical kind of um, things that, that we will face. Um, and, and we'll do, you know, from a day-to-day -day basis, I'll largely spend my time either with existing clients, um, yep. doing different phases of projects, because it's, it's rare that you do everything in the first go, to be honest, like it's, it's normally a journey. So you'll normally break it down into to phases and say, okay, this is what we're doing now, let's work on this. And then, you know, based on a level of prioritization, we might do something else as part of a phase two, like fixed assets or, or things like this, that, 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 you know, you can only deliver so much change in one go. Um, so other than that, I'll be speaking to new clients um, and, you know, getting to know their business on, on quite a granular level. Um, a lot of our stuff doesn't just revolve around um, just core finances, it actually revolves around operational data um and trying to make to make you know from a reporting perspective particularly something a customer to use 
that's ultimately what drives particularly business owners who are the people who will be coming to me and saying, I want to understand more about my business. Um, mm -hmm. they, they'll want to have some level of uh, information that they, they're not aware of. They'll want to have deeper insights into analytical information, particularly around how their business is operating. So that's where yeah. we'll sort of try to come in and say, okay, how do we make that a, a reality? And that's the kind of advisory work that, that I'll spend most of my time doing. Yeah, fantastic. So the, the client, when they come to you, do they have a real appetite then to to get that insight from from their business? Absolutely, and it's kind of key from our project perspective as well. Like we we always try to make sure that there is that level of engagement from from a business. Um, like we typically won't do a project unless there is uh, someone named as a project sponsor who's fairly senior in the business yeah. and wants it because typically if you're getting into like a you know the, the finance team or the people that are doing um they will have set up their systems and there'll be a certain level of familiarity and and not always like they'll often want change but um you know a lot of change in one go you, you, it can create some discomfort so there has to be that um that joined up want from the business and that and that that level of support from someone senior in the business as well it can't be for that finance person go away and sort it for me you know i, I don't yeah. want to get involved um it, it typically the most successful projects are those where there is um you know a, a level of collaboration between um someone at the top of the business and and the finance team to, to make sure that it happens supported by us so yeah yeah no that makes sense because you want that commitment don't you from both sides and you know ultimately just having that partnership for that for that end goal and objective um mm -hmm. to then achieve ultimately want to achieve so yeah i can i could totally understand that but in terms of with 4.0 then so what would you say you know unique value that you guys bring when addressing you know your clients more specific needs and challenges in like data management and and analysis yeah so i guess in terms of unique um areas you know the cloud has been around for a while i'm not saying it hasn't yeah. <laughs> certainly how it's existed potentially historically is most most accounting practices or implementers have attached themselves to one piece of software so if you went right. out to the Okay, you found a NetSuite implementer or you found a Dynamics or you found someone who does Zero, or, or whatever it might be, Sage, et cetera. Not, not, not name dropping particularly. Like you went out to the market and you found one person that specialized in one piece of software. Um, yeah. Now that that can have a lot of advantages. Like no one wants to be a lord of many and a and a master of none. Um, but I believe strategically what businesses want is things to be as easy as possible. So uh, we actually implement five different accounting systems and then associated apps around them. So typically when I'm meeting a new client and advising them on the best way to go, I'm actually potentially presenting three different accounting systems or two at least right. to say, or associated competitors. So two procurement systems or two reporting systems so that I can say, and when they go and sit in front of the board, they can say, we've done the due diligence and they yeah. don't have to go and do it themselves because it all takes time, right? You know, if you're, if you're sitting in, a, a, you know, the reason that you're there is because you've got a problem, which means you're probably yeah. doing something not efficiently and you're up against it from a time perspective, like because time is often the biggest pain that we feel apart from cost, right? So adding something on top of someone's work to go and say go and do all this r d on all these applications and select one and then when you go and you know see a vendor they only sell one product they're only going to tell you the good bits whereas yeah. we really want to present that unbiased perspective of saying you know here's three options i really don't mind which one you pick <laughs> to be honest yeah. um, so let's discuss the the rhyme nor reason for each one and put you in the place that you want to be from a cost functionality understanding of the market perspective yeah yeah no, um, i can see that yeah so you're not like shoehorning a particular product or service for for that client it's like right okay you're the expert in those different apps and and softwares that are out there and then you present them with you know two three solutions so right okay these all fit the mark but 
ultimately do you, do you tend what do you tend to want them to drive that decision then and say right okay you make the ultimate decision but these are the two three best ones that we feel Absolutely. fits Absolutely. with you we, we do something called a summary of findings. So we'll sit okay. down with a customer and say, look, we've sat and we've listened to you. We've t- tried our best to understand what you want. <laughs> you know, based on what you're looking to achieve, these are your options. And most people tend to work in like small, medium and large, right? And they'll have a cost expectation and where they want to go as a business in what time frame as well. So, you know, if they're sitting there saying, my business is really going to grow, but, you know, I'm not going to go with a small package because it'll be gone in a year. You yeah. Know, or, or, or it depends completely on the situation, but you're empowering them to make that decision, basically. Yeah, yeah. No, that make, that makes complete sense. And then if we were to, I guess, strip it back a bit, you know, for, you know, a business that's started from scratch um, on their advisory journey, how do you guys ensure that it's like a lucrative endeavor for its clients and how do you navigate and support them overcoming, you know, there's going to be many challenges and realizing those opportunities uh, uh, along the way. Yeah. Um, we've, we've built an approach, which um, is, is profitable. We're, we're doing pretty well at the moment, um, growing, growing nicely. Um, so, and we've done that because there, there's, there's, you know, you go to quite a few events and there's a lot of talk around digital advisory and the piece that I've talked about there in terms of what is a good system to do and, and so on and so forth. So we typically only, I don't actually charge for doing that advisory piece, um, okay. rightly or wrongly. <laughs> I, I often, it's something I do um and ah about, but we do the doing as well and I procure the software. So, yeah. because I'm a reseller, so we will typically want to try and make our money from doing something so we'll go and buy that application for you we'll set it up we'll train you on it um and we'll go through a project of doing doing that and then we will also yeah. have a post go live support period to, to to make sure that you're all calm and and everything is working and we're we're managing you through that process so that's that's typically where you know our our fees will come in is when we say right we've we've done the scoping we've agreed on what the solution solution will be um now jamie can you help me put it in <laughs> yeah yeah and, and there'll be real variations on what people need through that um you know often if you're a medium-sized business you've got a fair amount in it you're going to want some level of project manager to run it you know mm-hmm. and, and we potentially put project managers in or consultants to help with the, with what is a, a bulb of work. Right? Yeah. So we sometimes do some comments around that to, to put people in there. Some people like that comfort. Some people do, some businesses don't. They say, we're okay. We've got the internal resource and you, you just come in and almost as if you were a top, a technology vendor and yeah. show us, show us and we'll, we'll do it ourselves. So it's, it's really horses for courses. Yeah, of course. And I, I think you're right in terms, of, I guess, with the uh, clients you were in terms of that comfort, knowing that they've got a specialist coming in, knows the market inside out and can really add value and um, to the business rather than them having to, I'd imagine there's so much legwork that they will need to do to, you know, start afresh, whereas you're ahead of it already, aren't you? Into you know, knowing what's out it's there. Someone, it's having someone who's fallen over already. You okay. Know? it is a massive part of it you know we've we've not done everything 100 percent, but and, and a lot of these things work in similar ways like you know all accounting systems do debits and credits <laughs> most most procurement systems will do a purchase order and, and then match it to an invoice so once you kind of learn one they will all have their nuances but they will be fairly similar it's largely just understanding where the buttons are so right. most most processes like core financial processes within a business will be fairly similar across all businesses, particularly around procurement, right? And things yeah. and core finance bank. You know, you want to pay stuff, you want to get money in, right? Yes. Where businesses typically differ is around sales. So what do you do? Are you a restaurant? Are you a SaaS business? Are you a professional services company? And that's that's where the key differences in uh, are. Yeah. Because that's why you set up the business, right? To be different. Right? To, yes. To yeah. 
So that's that's often where where if you're going and talking about what referencing it back to the questions in terms of starting the advisory, you've got to understand. Like I, I would always say, go into a, a, a niche, and that's not to repeat what a lot of other people would say. I would say that's to understand the operations of that business and actually yeah. how that business makes money operationally. And then all you're doing is then supplementing that with a piece of technology or, or a working set of integrations into finance to be able to deliver something that solves the problem in that industry. And then yeah. the idea is that you can copy and paste that across other companies. You've done, you've done the legwork to create a solution which works for that industry from a technology perspective, supplemented by your knowledge as an advisor yeah. in that sector. And then you're really yeah. that's it. That's it, isn't it? And you know, ultimately just getting that clarity, isn't it? Across the organization, you know, that's the that's going to be the biggest, biggest benefit of that. But from um, let's say, you know, a, a buyer's perspective, obviously there's so many um, you know, apps and softwares out there. How do you ensure that the software that they choose is integrated and you know, there's almost like a seamless fit into I'd like to think there's a you know a seamless fit. I'm sure there's a lot of rejigging that you'll probably need to do within the organization. But how does that how does that work? Um it, it is quite client specific. Um yeah. and it will depend on limiting factors as well. So typically if you go into a business and say, right, you know, we want to start a new financial process, to be able to do that, you need to change your operational system. They will say, thank you very much for your time, Jamie. Goodbye. Right. Because right. The, <laughs> the basis of how a business operates and how they interact with their customers is always going to be more important than a back office finance function. Right. So that that is the challenge to sit there and say, okay, what's on the table and what's not on the table. Okay. And then you will have to have a conversation with those operational pieces of software to say, what are you guys willing to do? Uh, what, what, what can you do from a technology perspective? Can you send us any data? Do you have an API? You know, what, what, what needs to happen for you to be able to share this information? Is it even possible, right? Yeah. And that's an initial conversation we have during scoping. So we'll, we'll sit down with the customer and say, you know, the, the basis of our project being successful and you achieving what you want to achieve is that your operational software vendor plays ball. And if he doesn't, right. okay. yeah, <laughs> it's not a lot I can do that. Yeah. So, um, that's that's there's problems that are Jamie problems, and there are problems yeah. that are that are your problems as the client, yeah. sadly. Right? So, um, we, we will go through those conversations and see what's possible. And based on that, there are providers who can build integrations that we can potentially recommend, depending on which finance system you're moving to. So we've got, there's a lot, quite a few new providers which are called like um, middleware. So like Zapier is an example where you can take data from one place and send it to another. And there are a number of these other different vendors who can support you with, with building integrations. And then it's just about understanding your data flows. So where, which system should send data to where to make sure that things flow in straight lines, where it can right. get complicated is if, if you've got, an operational system, sending it to a reporting system, and then sending it separately to an accounting system, you end up with two different sets of, like, they should be the same. But right. if they together, you have to figure out why, right? So it's often easier that things go in straight lines. So you can go, right, well, this system sent it to the accounting system, they sent it to the reports. So you know at what step, if it went wrong, where it yeah. went wrong, <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah. Follow the breadcrumb. If you've got things going all over the place, you, you end up spending a lifetime figuring out and doing a whole big reconciliation process. So we'll we'll always spend a fair amount of time drawing the picture. And I, yeah. I always say, if you can't draw it, you don't understand it. Yeah, right? so Very true. that's a lot of that in terms of ensuring things are integrated and things work is is, is around understanding understanding what is sending information where and and having automated reconciliations in place to check that the data is right. Yeah. Okay. So then do you, do you almost do like a, when you're sitting down doing the scoping, is it almost case you do like a full strip out sort of thing and say, right, okay, 
this is what we really need to get rid of and then this is how we're going to build it beyond that is that the sort of price that you you go yeah, down sort of i mean you often sometimes it's a mix you like output like people are mostly going to care about outputs when when you yeah. go look at a business they're going to say this is the information that i want to see or i don't have um that'll be often a key ambition of the project right um beyond you know you know, having too much headcount and being efficient and upgrading to new technology and saving some money if you're overspending. But a key ambition, no one will be happy with you if you produce a system that doesn't produce the information that you want. They'll just go, well, what what was the point? <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. So there's always a little bit of starting at the end. And this is what I mean in terms of a little bit of understanding the business is understanding what are the outputs that they desire and, and and what data is going to be necessary to build those. So if someone wants to understand labor productivity, where are the hours yeah. coming from and where are the sales coming from? Right. Cause they might be two different systems. They, they might be the same. They might not. So some of that is driven by the necessary outputs and some clients will know what they want <laughs> and some will have a rough idea of what they want and they'll want you to fill the blanks in um okay. and that's just down to the client so some of it, it it's really as i say we do this summary of findings document where we sit down and say okay we've we've understood what you're looking to achieve and what reporting outputs you want and what are the limiting factors and what we can't change and then we'll sit there and propose one or two solutions um and, and tell them how much it's going to cost so, and then you know yeah. they say yeah or nay right yeah, well, that's it, isn't it? And it, it, with with yourself, and so I know you, you you know you work with lots of different industries. But let's say you're working with um, a restaurant. Do you almost have like a, a template? It's probably not the right word, but we'll see if we can get it. But do you almost use like a template? So right, okay, we're now working this other restaurant. This is what worked really well here. This is what didn't quite work here, and then bring that across to them. Is that is that that the way? Of a sense, certainly. Um, yeah. It, it's a little bit 80 20 i would say there'll be 80 percent of it that is fairly similar um or you'll be able to reuse things and you know a hospitality business they'll operate in similar ways they're, they're producing a different product whether they're producing different type of food or or whatever yeah. um or if they're you know hotel businesses it's rooms and all this kind of stuff so they might have a bit of different data coming in but you know they're a site-based business so how they want to visualize their data is going to be per site, right? And that's yeah. ultimately what they're going to want to see the profitability on in, a, in an easy way, whether it's on an individual site basis or a benchmarking perspective across all the sites or whatever it might be, right? So, and that that aspect of it is always going to be consistent, right? Yeah. So There'll be other that, that might not be consistent but from that perspective you know you're always going to have to do that because every hospitality business is going yeah. to want that so yeah that side of it is is important in terms of understanding your niche um but equally it, a lot of it is your ability and, and having that first client who's willing to to take you through that right mm -hmm. and your ability to pick it up because you have to have the first one and and the challenge is often in a, in a particular sector finding the first one that's willing to go through that journey on you um because you can't you can't you can't know everything it's not it's not, and you know i've never worked in a restaurant so someone had to be that first hospitality business for us um and yes. then you learn it and you can you know um apply it in the future so yeah, you know, you know, the, the trick is to find find that first one and invest in it. And you do, you, yeah. you do have to invest in it yourself and say, I am going to give a bit of this away to, yes. to 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 nail it. And then yeah, you you get the reward on the back, hopefully, that you can go to others and say, I've 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 nailed this. Right. Yeah, of course. Because also it's that learning and understanding, isn't it, of that that new project that's very different. So then again, you know, uh, widen your knowledge base and, you know, and that's the reason why you guys are experts in what you do um, and able to bring that to, to other clients. 
Um, a lot of it will be geographical as well. So, you yeah. know, at least in central London, there's a bit more hospitality around here. Um, you know, there's, there's certain industries that will lend themselves to certain geographical locations. Um, mm-hmm. You know, typically people do want to see the whites of your eyes if you're consulting them on how, like, because a lot of this is they might want to to get your opinion on how it could work better. So we all had COVID and we had to do these things remotely and there's certainly a place for it, but there's still a lot of value of sitting next to people and, <laughs> you know, actually convincing them that, you know, because you, you might be telling them something that they don't really understand. So yeah, it's helpful to be there. So. Yeah, having that having that open conversation. No, excellent. And so looking like bit beyond the financial metrics, and again, I know we we touch a little bit on this, but how do you support businesses in measuring and optimizing their performance across the the various aspects like you know, sustainability? That seems to be talked about um quite a bit at the moment. But yeah, how, how yeah, do you the ESG is the new um I guess the new thing that's coming <laughs> yeah. for the, the next the next level of complexity and, and these things um, you know I, I said it before to when I talk to other people it, it, I don't think it's going to get easier in terms of what you do and how you process information that will get easier you know we all have bank feeds or, or scanning invoices or creating reports you know you these things are a journey in terms of your knowledge and understanding and we've recently had things around payments and, and e-banking and now we're, we're starting to look at this ESG journey. Um, yeah. And it's an interesting one because it it's almost like you're going to have to create two sets of books in some ways. Okay. You're going to have like your finances, like how it yeah. works, you know, and, and your P&Ls and your balance sheets. And then you're going to have to prepare almost like a separate set of numbers for your ESG stuff to, 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 it's almost like a new financial statement. Um, and, and it's not going to apply to everyone at the beginning. Um, yeah. But, you know, there is going to be some social corporate social responsibility to do it if you want to present your company in that way. And, and at some juncture, it will become mandatory yes. to do it at, certain, at a certain place. So some people are getting ahead of the curve. Um, and if not, it's it's gonna happen. So mm. we're we I would you know it's still new, and I think if someone says that they're hugely advanced on this journey, then then fair play to them. But um, I, I think it's still something that's emerging. So I would I would say that there's still going to be a lot to learn for anyone <laughs> to be yeah. honest, because it's not finished. Agreed. So, yeah, there's there's still a way to go on that, but there are some good providers emerging around it that 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 will help you tackle that journey in terms of being able to get the data that you need to be able to prepare that, whether that's what suppliers you're using and what is their carbon footprint. Um, you know, what are you doing as a business from your own, um, you know, paperless perspective or whatever it might be? Um, you know, what is the, the demographics from a social perspective of your business and are you operating from a, from a, from a correct perspective in, in that regard? Um, you know, so there's, and they take you through through that journey, and, and that's a journey that we've started. Where it's going to get more interesting is um, around the integration of your operational data. So we work with a lot of hospitality businesses. You know, how many coffee cups do you sell? What's your carbon footprint of that? And yeah, that you're going to need access to that operational data, and it's got to be right. Mm. <laughs> so the one thing that you're going to see depending on how well you want to do this is you're going to need some help to do these integrations to be able to to give you that anal- analytical information to yeah. declare that. um and i think that's where where we're looking to come in and say first of all let's have a look at your operational data and let's see that it's right because Sometimes I meet a lot of businesses and I look at their operational data and it's not right. right. <laughs> it doesn't actually add up when you actually look at it in terms of, you know, if, if you're saying you've made this much sales, 
you know, and then you actually check if you like, you've got a timesheet system, this is how much you should have billed. And then this is the amount that you've actually billed in the accounting system. What, why aren't they the same? You know, so right. you, you've got to have that level of data continuity to be able to do this accurately. Otherwise you're going to be submitting different numbers all over the place. And that's where yeah. integration and data flows, going back to what we were talking about earlier, is going to become very important as it is with finances if you're adding something yeah. else we're just adding another thing to get right, right? yeah yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> you're right it's um yeah i think you're spot on in terms of everyone's learning at the moment aren't they, about esg and it's definitely emerging and the inevitability it will be a requirement in the future um but again it's just one of those just staying trying to stay ahead of the curve and be like right okay you know how we can how can we best build this out um, within the organisation, because it's inevitability um, that's going to happen, it rather is. than at the at the last minute saying, "Right, actually, we've got to do this tomorrow." <laughs> well, <laughs> where do we start? <laughs> and as an industry, we can be quite reactionary. Um, in, yeah, in finance. You know, um, sometimes not our own fault. You know, if the government change stuff, we have to get on with it. You know, um, but in certain things, we 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 can be a little bit reactionary in terms of like even if it's like going to the cloud or like generally or you know looking at how we operate um you know the, the, there can often be quite a bit of focus on within certainly within an accounting practice how you how you operate as that accounting practice so are we efficient are we doing things as quickly as we can from from our perspective um and and, and that's where you know reporting an esg might be a little bit different because it's there's not i mean yes you've got to do it internally and you've got to be efficient but actually a lot of the perspective is you're delivering something that that the client needs so it's actually more yeah. important to consider their perspective rather than how efficient you are if that makes sense yeah like, it is a slightly different you know it's a slightly different perspective um in, in terms of what you're delivering like whether whether like you, you the, like it's not it's not something it's something that you can certainly do inefficiently if you're having to collect data and do it manually um yeah. certainly you know the, the technology solutions are potentially gonna gonna be there to to help alleviate that um but it, it's ultimately got to deliver a set of metrics and ratios and what a, a, and reports that have got to go into a, a client's financial statements and be presentable based on what they want to present. So. Yeah, yeah, like um, yeah, the output needs to be like understood and make sense, doesn't it? Rather than it just being like a, a tick box exercise um, that you're doing. So right, okay, ESG done, um, yeah. that sort of thing. But um, no, great and. If we were to to look ahead, I mean, you know, how do you envision 4.0 adapting to emerging technology trends? I know, obviously, you've got a real good understanding already of the of the market, but as we know, you know, you need to stay ahead of the curve and and what's happening in the industry. But um, it is a challenge. Um, I mean, you're always you're always um, like you go to events, you see what's the who are the new kids on the block, and you're like a bit of a meerkat, like you know, what are these guys doing? What what are, what are these visionaries telling us um, are the things that are coming? Um, and we've been through a journey in terms of, if you look at some of the early people that started cloud accounting and zero was the way to go or QuickBooks or Sage or whatever it might be. Um, and we've seen how that's evolved and people have built a lot of apps around those applications and done scanning and, and, and reporting such as yourselves, all really good tech. Um, and then what we've seen recently is the emergence of mid-market um cloud-based applications so you'll be familiar with you know the iplicits and um x ledgers of these worlds accounts iq um sage intact you know those are sort of your mid-market players and i think that's an area that's going to evolve because i think a lot of mid-market businesses have held back from going to the cloud i think they potentially went to something like zero and went mm, not quite sure it does everything that i want or, or an right. equivalent um, so I think there's quite a lot of moving and shaking to happen in the mid-market. Um, okay. And you might also see some businesses come down in that if they've spent, gone and put in like a NetSuite or a SAP and because those were the only options that they had. 
Um, they may or may not, um, who knows, you, you've got to have a crystal ball to know, but certainly from a cost perspective, you know, these, it's like, it's like when you go and buy cars, right? Like you can go and buy, <laughs> you can go and buy a Renault, let's say, or you, now there's an option to go and buy something more in the middle. I don't know, <laughs> whatever, whatever people consider to be in the middle, like a Volvo or something, or you can go and buy a Range yeah. Rover, whatever it might be, right? So previously you sort of only had the, the, the SME focused products, which would take you a certain way. And then yeah. you had these big bam off expensive systems. So now that there is a, a gap in the middle, I think I think that becomes quite interesting. And, and I think that's where a lot of the moving and shaking is going to be um, over the next few years. Um, and then there will be ESG. Um, but I, I think the world is open for integrations. I think integrations is really where people are going to be able to differentiate themselves. If people can build them, um, or work with a partner that can help them build them. It's all about connectivity of data. Um, and I think that's an interesting place because you know, some businesses have even started charging people to access their data, which I think is madness. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, like charging for access to APIs. I think it's, I think it's mean, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I, I can't, I don't, I, I understand it from the, commercial perspective but also i don't understand it from a commercial perspective um in terms of it's, it's an opportunity to make money but you know it it, it it just seems a bit of a step too far to me personally but like people should be able to access their information and connect things yeah. if they want to. it's their data I don't, I don't think, think. You? yeah it's their data you know it's theirs why why should they be paying for it but that's my perspective um because I don't see that there's an incremental cost to a provider to do it, right? That there's no cost base to them. You yeah, know, they can argue that they're providing value, which I get, but there's no cost to them for someone going into their API and pulling data. So I think that's mean, personally, in my opinion. But yeah. so, but it, but it, you know, these these things are changing all the time. You know, people charging for that is new, um, and, and it will become a consideration. Um, so really, you know, even for me who spends my life doing this, I can't know everything. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. um, but I can know a lot about a, a, a handful of items. And as I say, we put our stake in the ground of doing these five for now. Um, yes. Unless someone really bangs down my door and says, Jamie, I really want to work with you. <laughs> you know, uh, that's that's kind of where I'm set and we're, we're set to grow on that. I think there's a lot we can do to do what, that better um, with more right. people, better processes. And there's always things that we can improve. Um, to And then it's just sort of getting out there, really. Uh, you know, we, we've grown a lot. And I think the challenge for us is, is for people to know we exist, to be honest. Yeah, of course. And yeah, talking of growing a lot, yeah, you've grown exponentially, haven't you, over the over the last you know couple of years that we you know I've known you um, seems to be on a on a great journey, and always new faces on me to the lower. The team's getting bigger and bigger as you guys are growing, which is which is great to see. Yeah, uh, solutions a bit more pricey, but it's fun as well, right? Like, yeah, it's 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 funny. Like, you never set out when I created this business to have you know to. The number of people that we do and the number of clients that we service but we're here now and you know you do have those moments where you sort of sit back and go you know it's it's a proper thing now you know, <laughs> you know actually actually got some responsibilities and stuff like this it's not it's not me in a, in a bag wandering around london in hoodie you know yeah um so there's a lot of fun but it's hard it is hard. i bet i bet yeah it comes with its challenges but no, thank you. I, I'm just conscious of time. So I, I will, uh, obviously, we want to cover off some of the Q&A. There's a few questions that come in. Um, but before we uh, begin the wrap up, just to conclude, I mean, do you have any other closing insights that you'd like to share with everyone on, on today's webinar? Not, not really. I mean, it depends a little bit on, on the audience. I mean, from from an accountant, if there's people from accounting practices, um, you know, my, my advice would be, um, of course, you know, I think niches work and uh, and making sure that you're maximizing 
what you do, right? So the technologies are there to cover the core processes from payments to scanning to, to accounting to reporting. Like, you know, you want to have that general perspective, but ultimately I think where you're going to win from an advisory perspective is, is to have that specialism and go and work like uh, often it's good to work in an industry where they use a particular operational or op- operational tool en masse, right? So if you go into construction, then like Procore is one of the main providers. If you can go and get into Procore and build an integration for Procore, you've created a commercial opportunity just because you have something that no one else on the market has. So that's where you can really use technology to your advantage is if you can almost go beyond the finances and pick an industry that has a market leader and, try and get them yeah. on the side and work with them. Um, and then you'll get all the advisory services around that and how they can look at their numbers and do all the bits that, that us accountants love to do of telling them where, where things could be done better, right? So I guess that would be sort of a, a closing insight if you're looking to really, really drive up the, the growth. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so we've actually got a few questions that are coming. So I'm just going to, rattle them off in no particular order. I'll do it one by one. I won't go through all of them in one go. Mm-hmm. But, um, so we've got one here. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned finding that first client to go on the journey with. What can that journey look like? So I think this is alluding to, yeah, your first client that you first got. Yeah, so from, from the hospitality perspective, um, again, we started from the perspective of what, what are you looking to achieve? What core operational systems have we got in the business? What have we got to integrate and and um how are we going to to go about that um what 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 does the perfect look like right and in terms of finding that first client um you do it for free uh, that's yeah. what i did <laughs> i gave it away i said you know i i i um you know i understand that you're taking a punt on me that i can fix this problem uh, and i will fix it for you um and then once i've like the the deal I try to strike with a client is, you know, the first one particularly is uh, I'll give you a good deal, but I want you to help me find the next you. Right. Right. So that's, that's, I, and and I'm very open and clear about that, you know, like, like very upfront. I will always say to first one is like, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Finance director. I'm, I, you know, I, I respect that I'm, I'm coming in a bit green on this. I'm going to give it to you, give you a good deal. But if I do it and I nail it, my expectation and whether our relationship is going to be good on an ongoing basis is you help me find the next you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Refer to so <laughs> you know, yeah. just, yeah, get, get, get in it on. No, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so w- there's actually something, there's a question here and we haven't even mentioned it on the webinar talking about AI. How have we had a webinar? <laughs> it's a buzzword these days. Um, but um, so we've got one here. What are your views on how AI will transform tech stacks? Um, I don't have much of a view on it, to be honest. I think AI has been around for a, for a, a long time um, already. Um, and ultimately, where is ai going to be the most useful where is it most used and typically it's around interacting with customers right so someone has presented a question here's a piece of ai to deliver an answer to that if you take like chat chat gpt as an example on on a very very basic level so if you're applying that rationale to uh, uh, an accounting instance or a finance instance it's going to be a case of, well, what are the questions that we're going to be asked, right? Leaving sort of tax and all that kind of stuff to one side, sticking to technology where I'm more comfortable, you know, is there going to be automated chat or saying, you know, if I want to integrate this, how do I do that? Or, you know, what is the best way to prepare my, you know, <laughs> integrate my bank or all you know, these kind of things? I think there's going to be a fair, like, that information may be available. There may be, they may be able to go out on the web and deliver an answer to that question. But ultimately, what we're providing here is is a, is a service and, a, and an advisory item, which I think that most humans would still want some verbal confirmation from an advisor or an expert 
to take any information that they do get and throw it against the wall and check what any level of AI is telling us is a good idea. So I think what it's going to do is it's going to make customers more knowledgeable or potentially more, more less knowledgeable, depending on what, yeah. what information they get. But, but they will at least be able to come armed with information. Um, yeah. And that's that's kind of where where I see it. Um, and it might help from a service delivery in terms of weeding out simple questions. Um, you know, we always have, certainly when we're doing to know, you know, I've forgotten my password, what do I do? Or, or, or all these kind of things. So it might weed out some of the more basic stuff, but ultimately we're, we're humans and we kind of want that reassurance when we're talking about technical stuff from a human so i still see that existing yeah yeah i agree thank you jamie and um, got two more questions uh that i'll go through here um can you give us an example of a tech stack that's worked well for one of your hospitality clients how many software tools are involved for example uh depends on the size of business and, and what they want to spend so if you're taking um uh, an SME business, um, you know, you ultimately is what you would want to use something that um, is going to take care of that operational uh, element of data because that's like the crux. Like when you have one restaurant and the owner sits in that restaurant, they know how well they're doing because they see the number of people coming in the door. Right? Yeah. And then they'll have their percentages in their head. Like they'll go, right person has walked in and bought something you know 30 percent or whatever is going on labor 15 <laughs> percent is going on pro like they'll have done the maths already in their head so and they'll run their business by their bank statement so all that happens is as the business gets better is that the owner can see less they, yeah. they can't see every store they can't see what's walking in they can't check that people aren't throwing vegetables away because they're over ordering so that's where the crux of a hospitality business is so but equally, the price of understanding that goes up. So a business has almost got to a, got to get to a critical size before they're willing to pay for something that's going to tell them that, right? So you'll get industry specific um, pieces of software. So in the past, I've used an application called Azora to to do a lot of my reporting and operational analytics and integrations. But that's for someone who wants to pay for that level of solution. It's not it's not given away, right? It's, so yeah. It, you know, if you're using, if you're going for an SME assumption, the functionality in something like Zero is going to be narrower than if you're using a mid-market application. So you'll have to use more apps and, and certain things will be more important to a business. So if you've got a large, larger SME and they do want to use Zero, they might go and buy like something that does procurement because they, they feel that they need that. Right. So they might go and buy a light to do it and then they might put a reporting engine on it, you know. So ultimately, it's, if you're if you're going that way to service business up to a certain stage, you might have five or five different systems. Right? If, if that's OK for you then you accept that, if you're saying procurement, um, you're going to have a POS system that's integrated, you're going to have your accounting system, you're going to have a reporting system. Um, you know, the, operationally there's going to be some level of rotor information um and there might be something around stock as well if they carry a lot of stock they they'll, they'll do something around having your f and b you have an f and b system normally yeah right? you know there you're talking about five different pieces of cloud-based software that you want to integrate in that example yeah. if you go and go up the say that that's too many and actually if you add up the cost you're spending the equivalent of buying a mid-market anyway so right, okay there is some value to being lean in some cases in terms of the number of pieces of, of technology because integrations don't always work as well and the more integrations it's something else to manage if you buy a piece of software from one vendor it's more likely it's going to be more robust because they own that problem if an integration breaks who owns that problem does right does does the point of sale own that problem who who owns that problem right and that's where you can get into trouble if you've got too many systems is 
no one owns. If you're not using a vendor that's specifically supplying that integration, no one owns it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's where it can be advantageous to use a, a mid-market application if you go and look at, um, you know, potentially a, a staging tax or something, or whoever, they will have procurement built in, potentially. Um, right. But then it's a case of functionality. Does it do everything that you want, right? You know, the, the good thing about having all these marketplace partners is they can focus on one thing, which means they can build a lot of functionality just for that. Right. Whereas if you go and get a mid market person, they've got to do good reporting, good procurement, good bank feeds, good scanning. You know, they, they might not do everything well. And yeah, it, it's such a moving picture. It's so difficult to say, but all you can do is state these are your options. This is our understanding. Yeah. These are the what we perceive to be the positives and negatives. And if you've got any questions, let me know. But ultimately, with a lot of things, it's a case of getting the most out of them. You know, yeah. not every aspect of the system is going to be perfect. But if you ask the right questions, and you do that scoping, it will normally do 95 plus percent of what you want to hopefully well, if you've done your scoping and you've stated the things that are important to you. Nothing's ever going to do 100% everything the way that you love it. It's just, it's yeah. just not. It's just not reasonable expectation. You're going to have to flex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Um, and then just one final question. I I know we touched on it already, but I will ask away. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing there's a trend when it comes to ESG reporting? Um, and where should we start? Um, not really. I mean, I'm sort of starting this journey myself, so it's something that. Yeah. I to, to you guys about um and, yeah. and i know you're, you're working with some some partners on that um so we're we're still pretty close to the beginning of that that journey um there are consultancy companies as well that, that are setting up to to specifically look at esg um as well so I, um you know i would like you're you're not if you're starting now there's not many people that are far ahead of you yeah. so yeah there's a so far to go to be honest so you know there's you, you you'd you'd be starting from the same position as a lot of people in terms of google <laughs> speed to yeah. some consultants do your homework um you know uh, the the extent of it that because you've also got to find a customer and that's the other side of this is that because it's not mandatory particularly at the moment you've almost got to find a customer that wants to do it right yeah and those aren't on trees um so there is a, like we're often driven by demand more than anything so as yet i can say in my life no one has actually ever come to me and said right jamie i want esg and the day that someone does that you'll find i'm a lot more motivated right <laughs> <laughs> but, but at the moment no one's done it so i would always sort of you know you've got you've got to find a practical example before anything otherwise it's all theory and you can only yeah. go so far with theory anyway so you've got to find yeah. that first fair no thank you for that and and just to add to that in terms of um so we've asked that question with esg reporting that's something that um you know we've certainly stamped our, our flagpole on the ground for that we're, we're spotlight sustained so feel free to get in touch with us directly and um yeah we'll do our best to assist but that are that's uh, all the questions that we have so i will wrap up now just going to reshare my screen with you all uh if you bear with me. So I've just popped in a, a couple of links here. Um, so get in touch with us. So we've got QR codes for Jamie um, as well as my, as well as, uh, as well as myself. So um, reach out if you have any other questions or you know want to arrange any calls or anything like that. I'm more than happy to assist. And um, yeah, finally, thank you, Jamie. Thank you everyone um, who's attended the webinar. What we will be doing is we'll send out um, a survey as well, just in terms of how the webinar went and anything else that you want us to cover. Um, just, yeah, it'll be great to get some feedback, but thank you so much for your time and have a good rest of the day.